asking the Wyoming State Legislature to resist any contract with a for-profit prison corporation. I think that would be the uh, that'd be the way for the state legislature to resist that. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these for-profit prison corporations have uh, tried to find ways to snake their ways around the state legislature. Um, what's happening up in uh, Evanston is a perfect ex perfect example, um, and th and there are certainly others. But uh, I, I share your concern and um, and uh, just to briefly touch on. Um, on uh, the incarceration of children, either 18 years of age is an adult or it isn't. Mr. Guthrie. Well, the first thing is I agree that for-profit prisons are, n are, well, I just would oppose that. Uh, I agree that that's not a place to make money. It's a painful thing for the state. As to children, kind of following up on what we were talking about earlier, and that is I think about my son, and he's 20 years old. Great kid. But he's not very mature. And he doesn't make the best decisions. And I worry about kids his age, and I think we need to be a little bit more sympathetic to young people who screw up. And we don't necessarily need to hold them to the same standards that we would like someone like myself. Um, so just the idea of incarcerating children um, in terms of what I've sort of experienced here, it was semi-for-profit in terms of the uh, various um, places where kids would be kept, has been a nightmare. Um, there's been, I don't think any one of them has ever been run I mean, starting back when I represented a poor kid, I didn't represent the kid, I represented the mother. He hung himself inside of the, uh, a, uh, the facility just here in town the, when it was a, a juvenile facility and he wasn't being watched and he wasn't being monitored and he hung himself. And so I don't think private places do a very good job on this topic. Right. Um, well, um, I guess I will give you folks uh, two minutes to close. Um, I don't remember who I started with with the last question. Do you guys remember? Mm. Okay, so I'll start with Mr. Guthrie. Um, well, thank you, um, everyone who showed up here tonight. It's been real enjoyable to, to make eye contact with you and to maybe see if some of my message is connecting with you, and I hope it has. I've been running on a... Uh, campaign slogan of facts. Facts matter. I'll make decisions based upon the facts at hand, whether they're hard or easy. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, well, thank you again, the League of Women Voters and the Wyoming Tribune Eagle for this forum. Uh, and thank you to everyone that I've met so far on the campaign trail. Uh, I started this campaign thinking that I was going to go out and change a bunch of hearts and minds. I was dead wrong. <laughs> the people I've met have changed me. And the experiences I've had have changed me. And at this point, I, I, my only wish is to get the chance to serve them in the state legislature. And so if you're looking for someone who is going to invest in education, bring jobs to Wyoming, improve our health care, and protect our sacred public lands, and invest in our communities, and make them stronger, then I would be honored to have your vote on November 6th. Thank you very much. Great. Um, well, thank you two for coming, and uh, thank you for everyone in the audience. Um, we're going to take a five-minute break, and then uh, we will go to our candidates for District 11. That's right. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, uh, welcome back, folks. We're going to get started here again. Um, the rules are the same as the previous forum. Um, Two minutes for an opening, a minute and a half to answer the question, 30 seconds to uh, rebut your opponent. And this time we have two candidates for the same race, uh, House District 11. Um, so we have the Republican, Jared Olson, and the Democrat, Caleb Taylor. So um, 
Let's just get started here with a two-minute opening. We'll start with Mr. Olson. Thank you, and thank you to the uh, league for putting this on. Thanks for everyone who com who's you know coming out. I, I I think it's phenomenal when we can engage civically and discuss the issues and and uh, move the ball forward for Wyoming for everyone. Um, I am the current representative for House District 11. I just completed my uh, first term of two years. I'm first and foremost, above all, a husband, and I'm a father of three, a new baby who just arrived and is uh, a month old and is here being civically engaged. <laughs> so very, very exciting time in the Olson household. Um, I am a fourth generation Wyomingite. I ran for office originally because, because my family um, is here in Wyoming, because I love Wyoming. Um, and, I, and I know that Wyoming is the best place to live, um, to raise a family, to work, and I want to I wanna make it even better, and I want to continue that legacy. And uh, in the legislature, I serve on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, after I completed my first year, that was my committee. And I gained three more, so either I'm doing a really good job or I have too much time on my hands. So I now also serve on a Governor's Residence Committee as well as a Courtroom Security Commission and uh, was the author of a budget amendment to create the Blockchain Task Force. So I also serve on the Blockchain Task Force, which I know we'll get to discuss more with uh, some of these questions as we get into it because it's a big part of Wyoming. It's a big part of the conversation that you've been hearing that you're going to hear tonight. You're going to hear the word diversification over and over and over again. And blockchain is really, is really one part of that, one part of the pie that uh, I feel very proud of being a part of, helping move the ball forward in Wyoming. So look forward to the discussion tonight, and uh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Um, yeah, I would like to, to thank the League of Women Voters and the Wyoming Tribune Eagle um, for putting this on and, and welcoming us all here today and Spectrum for recording it and, and posting those videos later. Um, as a fifth generation Wyomingite, the future of Wyoming is really important to me and I want to make sure that we have the, the resources and the tools that we, we need to uh, ensure that future generations can share and, and enjoy the same same Wyoming that I grew up in, the same Wyoming we enjoy and live in today. Uh, we need to to be able to, to to be able to do that. We need to make sure that we have a solid foundation to to do that. And a lot of the work that happens in the legislature is a big part of that. And the, there's um, challenges that I face. Um, I'm the regional operations director for a, a disability waiver service provider called Bridges of Wyoming. I employ about 100 people. Um, we face, are, are facing all kinds of, of issues with workforce and making sure we have workers to, to work for us and providing those services. And those, those issues go along, like Jared said, with, with diversification, um, building a skilled workforce, and it all kind of wraps into a lot of the work that, that is being done um, in the legislature. And I think that we have, uh, we just need to make sure that we can preserve what we have and enhance those uh, things for the future. So thank you. Great. And uh, just a reminder to those in the audience, I don't think it has changed all that much, but uh, if you folks want to write uh, a question on a card and submit it, uh, just raise your hand and someone will bring you a card, and then they will bring the card up to me uh, for the end if we have time. Great. Uh, so we're going to start um, with a question about something that I think is on everyone's mind in the state. Um, at a meeting yesterday in Casper, lawmakers heard a presentation about the Wyoming Department of Transportation, which is now facing significant um, amounts of funding needs. The state also has a continued struggle with uh, funding education. And uh, under the current system, much of the state's revenue comes from mineral extractions, sales, and property value, creating a sort of boom and bust cycle. So how specifically, and I have bolded and underlined this, so be very specific or I will ask a follow-up question, how specifically would you address the state's budget needs and mitigate the f effects of a boom and bust cycle? And we're going to start with Mr. Taylor. Wyoming has been um, in the boom and bust cycle for forever. We've heard um, for my entire lifetime, the need to diversify the economy and to to move that and and change that. The extraction industry has been um, I, I've benefited tremendously from the extraction industry. My dad was a sodash miner in in um, the Green River mines, and so that industry is is close to me. And we need to make sure that we are uh, 
are supporting that industry, enhancing that industry. There's a lot that can be done, um, especially with coal and carbon-based manufacturing that we've not explored to its fullest extent. And I think that if we can enhance the current industries to promote uh, an increase in that tax base right away uh, is, is one step of, of a larger picture. We need to make sure that we're uh, not only enhancing our current industries, but, but providing an opportunity for new industry to come to Wyoming. Uh, we've all, we've, we have a really friendly tax base or f system. Um, we have really friendly, uh, business friendly regulations. And that doesn't seem to be drawing in the industry that we need. So we really need to make sure that we're investing in, in different things to bring that industry in to increase our, our tax base overall. Great. Uh, Representative Olson. Thank you. Yeah. So when I ran two years ago, I, I thought the same thing. I thought uh, there, was a, there was an issue with our boom and bust cycle, and I wanted to be a part of that solution. And I talked about diversification two years ago, but the difference now is that I've spent two years actually working on legislation to move that ball forward. So I'm not just talking about diversification. I have a solid record on that, and I think that's the solution to a lot of those issues. It's the solution to a lot of our education funding issues and our budget woes. Um, I mentioned blockchain. I also authored and sponsored um, five additional bills, freeing up regulation and allowing for an entire new industry to come into Wyoming. And it has come. Um, and it's growing every day. And it's, and it's phenomenal to watch it take off. And the entire world is watching this stage right now. I also authored um, a bill that amended the Wyoming crowdfunding laws, which were put in place in 2016. And prior to uh, my bill that amended it, there was zero crowdfunding efforts in the state of Wyoming. After I amended that, again, uh, loosening regulations and allowing for greater investments, we have two crowdfunding major efforts, uh, one based out of Casper that deals with orthopedics, and another is actually a minor league soccer team. So phenomenal um, steps towards diversification aren't going to occur overnight. They're going to occur long term. And it takes, um, it takes a lot of tenacity going back again and again into that session and working sometimes on small pieces of the pie in order to grow the pie really big for Wyoming. Great. And um, related to funding, um, there was a proposal last session to implement a lodging tax. Um, other people have proposed um, doing an income tax, um, other different taxes, <laughs> I guess. Um, so where do you stand on, on any taxes? Do you think that any new taxes or any higher taxes, maybe on gasoline, are necessary to bridge that funding gap? And we're going to start with uh, Representative Olson. Sure. So when we talk about diversification, we have to then wonder how does that money get into the state's revenues? How does it get into our pot? And that uh, was mentioned actually earlier today in the, in the debate and has been mentioned um, many times across Wyoming, and that's changing our tax structure. structure right? So, um, but the key is not to get lured into um, false um, taxes that we think are going to actually help Wyoming. I heard um, today, I think, mention of a, a cigarette tobacco tax. Well, we assessed that in the Wyoming legislature, and it would raise $30 million. That's a lot of money to me. That's a lot of money to you. But in a $3 billion budget, um, and we have a $1 billion deficit, $30 million doesn't address it. Um, and the lodging tax simply wouldn't do that either. Long-term solutions require diversification of our economy. It requires more players in the economy. Once you have those players, then you can spread the, the tax burden across more people. If you start to play with the taxes too much now, you're just going to play with taxes on the, on the 500 or so thousand people that already live in Wyoming. Um, you're not actually going to, um, I think, grow your state because you're going to de-incentivize uh, those businesses from coming in. Um, classic example was also mentioned earlier today, for those of you who, are, who were here, and that dealt with the mineral industry. There was a time when we didn't have an 8% severance tax on coal. Well, there's a reason why we mined coal like crazy in Wyoming and not in Montana. You have to create the climate before you do anything with taxation. Right. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Taxes is always a, a tough subject. Nobody really wants to talk about them, and nobody really wants to, to raise them and or change the structure of something that we already know because if you know a system, you know how to expect, what to expect. And so we, with any tax reform, we need to make sure that we're involving everyone in 
in the conversation through the business community to um, the individuals that are going to be involved, what that impact will be on their specific industries and what, what needs to be done. And it needs to take place over a long period of time. It's not going to, we're not going to find any silver bullet. We're not going to raise income tax and solve the, the budget woes. It's just not going to happen. It needs to take place over a long period of time with everyone that will be involved by those tax structures and put into place um, something that will will maintain our business friendly, tax friendly um, structure that we have that a lot of businesses find to, to be an incentive to come here um, at the same time addressing the long term needs of our budget that is facing large deficits and um, finding long-term solutions will be a long-term process. Great. Um, so as a 30-second follow-up, would you support any um, taxes as it stands right now, any uh, new or different alternatives, or do you think we should um, wait on that? I, I think that with the, our current tax structure um, is that it, we have in place um, – the lodging taxes and stuff like that will make minor impacts, but they're not going to, to be any long-term solutions. Okay. Um, so, oh, sorry, uh, Representative Olson, do you have a follow-up? I, I think I covered it. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Just making sure. Um, so, um, what decision um, that has been made by the legislature over the past few years with, if you were elected, um, would you like to revisit either a failed bill that you'd like to see adopted or something that was passed that you think needs to be rolled back or uh, reconsidered? Um, I think we're at Mr. Taylor. Yeah. Okay. I, I think one of the, the biggest things that we um, has, has gone through the legislature, has gone through the legislature multiple times, um, and we're not finding any solutions to, but that's Medicaid expansion. And whether we expand Medicaid or we find another solution, there's just been a lack of a lack of action. Period with with the healthcare and our healthcare system and the the crisis that we have. We only have one provider in the the exchange to to buy from. That makes that increases the prices for everyone. Um, we we didn't take action when we could have created a state level exchange um, to maybe entice, put some Wyoming incentives into that exchange to entice more providers to come in. Um, I'm not saying the Medicaid expansion is going to be the, 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 the silver bullet that solves the health care crisis, um, but we need to have a conversation of, of, of that and we need to revisit the, the health care issue and Medicaid expansion could be a part of that overall um, conversation. Okay, um, 30 extra seconds. Would you support Medicaid expansion then if this were to come to the table and you were a lawmaker? Would you vote yes on Medicaid expansion right now? I would support Medicaid expansion, yes. Great. Um, Representative Olson. Yeah, so uh, one, one, one bill that I watched uh, come out of the legislature in, in 2016 and that I carried on the floor of the House from the Judiciary Committee was criminal justice reform, and I'd like to see it come back. Um, I also have authored um, legislation uh, minor, addressing minor areas of that, uh, but what I learned when I, when I carried that bill on the floor of the House, uh, and it passed the House with 31 votes, by the way, and died in the Senate, is that, that the, the product of criminal justice reform in our state is decades long, and the progress is almost nothing. Uh, so right now our Judiciary Committee is looking at probation, parole, it's looking at all kinds of ways, um, reinvestment, it's looking at uh, different solutions to the, to the puzzle that is criminal um, justice, but, but uh, that was a, the bill that we had I thought would have moved the ball um, forward in Wyoming. And what I mean by that is our incarcer incarceration rates are through the roof, and we spend millions and millions of dollars incarcerating people when we're not addressing the actual, the actual problems. The actual problems for many of those people are mental health problems. They're substance abuse problems. And when we go to the chopping block on the budget, it, is often, it often is mental health and substance abuse that gets cut. Um, I fought against that. I've